In this video, we're going to learn how to convert between two different systems. Um, we have the metric system and the English or American system that you are more familiar with. The conversion between this takes a few different steps. Um, I'm going to try and show you the easiest way. This is going to transition you into learning, I know, next year in chemistry. You'll have to do a lot of this uh, as well. The process for converting between two systems um, you need what is known as a conversion factor. And a conversion factor is a known value between the two systems. It's not something you have to memorize. Um, you know conversion factors in the English system such as one, um, one yard is equal to three feet. That's a conversion factor. So the thing that we're in essence doing, if I said that seven times one you would understand that it equals 7. Multiplying something by 1 does not change the value of it with the identity property in math. An example, another example of that would be something like what would 7 times um, 4 over 4 be equal to? That would still be 7 because you realize that 4 over 4 is equal to 1. So it doesn't matter if it's a fraction, if the numerator and denominator are equal to the same thing, then it would still be the identity property. So let me take this a step further. So 7 times 2 plus 2 over 4. There the numerator does not look like the denominator, but you realize that the numerator is still equivalent to the denominator. So therefore, this is still the identity property. In every one of these cases, you have not changed the value of that initial number. It's still the identity property. So what we're going to do is take the same idea, but we're going to have to incorporate it into units of measurement. So the unit of measurement on the numerator is going to be equivalent to the unit of measurement in the denominator, just using two different systems. So if I said 7 times um, 1 yard 3 feet, what that, in essence, is saying is still 7 because you have multiplied it by something that is equivalent in the numerator and denominator. So that's the idea of what we're going to be doing today. So the first example we're going to do is an example where I'm going to convert from the metric system to, let's make up a number, 41 centimeters. And I would like to know what is that equivalent to in inches. So what I would do is if I had a metric ruler, I would measure something that's 41 centimeters. But if I said, what if I measured that same line? But this time I used uh, a ruler that didn't have the metric system on it. Instead, what would that be equivalent to in inches? If I don't have a, a ruler, it's not going to be very easy um, to do by looking at it. Instead, I have to do it mathematically. So here's what you have to know. The conversion factor is not something you memorize. This is a very common one. 2.54 centimeters is equal to 1 inch, and they will give that to you. I will give that to you on a test. If I know it's a conversion factor that is probably not the most common, I will give it to you. It's not something you memorize. So the first step, I'm going to take the value that I'm given, which is 41 centimeters, and I immediately, don't even think about it, just immediately put it over 1, make it a fraction. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply it. This is the whole identity property. So I'm going to multiply it by a value where the numerator and denominator are equivalent to each other in terms of length. So the tricky part for students is, well, where do I put which unit? So the, the way that you have to do this is I have to get rid of centimeters. This unit is not what I want, so I have to cancel it out. In math, the only way you can cancel out units is if you have one of the units in the numerator across the equation and one in the denominator. So to make centimeters cancel out, I have to force centimeters into the denominator of the next fraction. So what that's going to do is it will cancel out centimeters. So if I know a conversion factor that has centimeters in it and is going to get me closer to where I want to go, which is inches in this case, then I'm going to use it. And I made this a very simple example. And so therefore, I can use this conversion factor that I wrote up here. Centimeters in the denominator inches in the numerator. Notice how I set the units up even before I looked at the numbers. That's the first thing. If you mix up where the units go, then you're obviously not going to get the right answer. So to understand why I place centimeters in the denominator is completely based on the fact I need to cancel it out. So now centimeters cancel it out. 
What I now do is I just plug in whatever the coefficient is in the conversion factor in front of centimeters, which in this case is 2.54. I will keep it with that unit, so 2.54. The unit inches had the coefficient 1. So what that says is my value, I've got to what I want. I wanted my final answer to be in inches, and in this case, inches is in the numerator. So therefore, my final answer will have inches as its unit. So to mathematically do this, you can put this in your calculator, but what you would get is 16.1, and that would be inches. So what I would say is if I measured out a line that's 41 centimeters, if I used another ruler that only had the English system on it, it would be equivalent to 16.1 inches. So that's conversion between metric to English. Let's do another example where we're going to reverse it. So I'm going to say let's start with the inches. I want to know what 12.7 uh, 12 inches is in centimeters. So the first thing I do, take what I'm given, put it over 1. Now I can start using my conversion factors. So now because inches in the numerator, I have to put inches in the denominator of the next conversion factor. Since I have a conversion factor that directly gets me from where I am, which is inches, into centimeters, it's the same one up here. I can use the same uh, conversion factor, but notice here, the inches is not in the denominator. So what I have to do is I have to put the correct coefficient. Inches always is the one inch in the conversion, so I put one in front of inches. 2.54 goes with centimeters. So now, mathematically, let's solve this, 32.2, and I'm left with, because inches canceled out, I'm left with centimeters, which is why my unit follows 32.2 is centimeters. So these are simple one-step conversion factors. This is saying that I had a conversion factor between the given unit and wanted unit supplied to you. So what if it wasn't that case? So these are two simpler examples, um, one where you multiply technically and one where you divide. So let's do an example where it's not as simple. So let's say we did kilometers. And I want to say, what is that in yards? Technically, the only thing I think I would still once again have to give you is 2.54 centimeters is equal to 1 inch. Notice how my conversion factor, I don't think anyone here that's listening to this would automatically know without looking up. I'm sure the internet will provide a direct conversion factor between kilometers to yards. You will not have to access to that on a test. So going through the process is what you need to be able to understand how to do. So what I first do is I take my given value place it over 1. Notice I don't have a conversion factor that includes kilometers. So you've got to think, what is a way that I can get closer to that conversion factor? From my previous lesson, what you've learned, you have done metric to metric. So the best way to do this is I would put kilometer, you have to put kilometer in the next conversion factor in the denominator. What is an, what's another prefix or value that you know is equivalent in kilometers? What I probably would do is say, well, if I can get to centimeters, that's going to put me closer to inches, which is really the where I want to go. So maybe you don't know what is equal to what at this point. So here's my strategy for this. What I would do is I would place, of these two units, kilometers is the bigger unit. Kilo one kilometer is way bigger than one centimeter. So I'll put one in front of that. Now, I don't think many of you would be able to do this automatically, so what I'll do is I'm going to do on the side down here, all right, let's imagine one kilometer, I've got to convert that into centimeters. So this is going to utilize last video's um, understanding to get to this answer. Kilometers is a positive 3, centimeters is a negative 2. When I subtract positive 3 from a negative 2, I get a positive 5. So that means one kilometer is equal to 100,000 centimeters. So what I did is I took this decimal that was after the one right here, there it is, 
and I moved five places to the right because it's a positive value, so that means I'm going to multiply this number, or 1, times 10 to the fifth, and that's what 100,000 is. That's 1.0 times 10 to the fifth. So now I can plug that back up here. I know it's a really big number here, so let's, there we go. So at this point, now I've canceled out kilometers, I'm left with centimeters. So that means the next conversion is centimeters must go in the denominator. Now I have a conversion that has to inches. That's going to help me get to yards, definitely. So what I can do is I can cancel out centimeters. So what's the values that go in front of that? 2.54 and 1 inch. So if, if you can go from inches to yards, that's obviously something you can do, but I'm not going to... I'm going to kind of do what I think many students would do, is say, all right, well, I realize inches is there. Inches to feet would be a pretty easy conversion. Uh, not one that I provide, because I think you should know that. 12 inches is equal to one foot. Notice the number goes in front of the unit that's equal to. And then finally, since inches cancels out, I do realize that I can go from feet to yards pretty quickly. So that's three feet is equal to one yard. Now. I'm at my unit that I've been asked to get to. So all I would have to do is start multiplying all my numerators together, divide that by the multiplied denominators, and I've pre-done the math here, but this is a much, it's a pretty big number. You can do it mathematically to see if you would get the same. All right. Um, so that would be my final answer, 1,421,697. It's more of the process. Notice I had to do many conversion factors, but every one of these conversion factors, the numerator and denominator are equivalent distances. So it's like I'm multiplying the value by one. So I haven't changed the value. All I've done is convert it to a different unit. So 1,300 kilometers, which is what I started with over here, if I put that into yards, if I ran a 1,300-kilometer race, that I was actually running almost a million yards. Okay. So if you have any questions, please let me know. But that was just a way to uh, convert when it's a little bit larger than just a simple conversion from one to the other. All right.